Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this episode, I'm gonna show you guys an amazing customizable tool for controlling the Fly-By-Wire A320. This thing is fantastic. Trust me, you don't wanna miss this. Make sure if you guys can that you join us at Flight Sim Expo 2023. That's right, Overkill Simulations is going to be present this year, guys, at the Lone Star Museum in Houston, Texas. If you guys are interested in joining us there, be sure to check down the description below. There is a coupon code that can save you guys a bit of money uh, using my personal reference uh, to get you there. Again, that'll save you a bit of cash in your Flight Sim Expo 2023 experience. This is gonna be June 23rd through the 25th of 2023, uh, again in Houston, Texas, at the Lone Star Flight Museum. I went a few years ago in Las Vegas and they are an absolute great time. There's some very, very informative and educational seminars to help better your flight sim experience, as well as a ton of developers of both hardware and software that you guys actually get to try out, essentially a try before you buy experience, as well as talking with the developers themselves and uh, finding out what the products are all about. So again, guys, it's gonna be Flight Sim Expo 2023 in Houston, Texas. I hope to see you guys all there. Don't forget to use my coupon code that you can find down in the description below. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. All right, guys, so what we're gonna be talking about is this add-on here. This is a free add-on found on flightsim.to called Web Remote for the Fly-By-Wire A32 and X. What this does is it gives you the ability to remotely control many of the features, switches, buttons, et cetera, that are located in the Fly-By-Wire A320. However, what makes it very unique is it's customizable, meaning that you can move the panels around to your liking. You also have the ability to pan the page around. I'm gonna show you guys as much of this as I can and while getting the point across. Now, there are a couple of caveats that uh, you need to make sure you have. Well, one in particular, and that is FSUI PC7. Now, I'm gonna show you guys where to get that here in just a second there is a free version of it you do not need the payware version of it it just has to be installed on your machine and then i'm going to show you guys also how to use it uh, to uh, enable the web socket in order for this to be used here's the thing about this um, even in the description, it says not to necessarily use this as an external cockpit, but to think of it more as an instructional or tutorial uh, utility. Now, I'm going to be using it as an external cockpit, primarily for things like the overhead panel and the pedestal. You guys, if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, I am constantly talking about how much I hate uh, reaching out for the mouse and keyboard. I really hate it. So as much of that immersion as I can keep, um, I try to hold on to. And so I'll use utilities like this all the time. Now, this is definitely designed primarily for a touch screen. Now, this can be any touch screen you have. The other really cool thing about it is if your network is opened, uh, you can have a friend actually rem use their web browser to remote in and be, for example, a pilot monitoring or first officer, if you will, depending on who's flying the aircraft and who's not, the other person can be controlling everything else. So this can be a really neat way to sort of do a shared cockpit kind of experience with the aircraft as well. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about what we need to do. Obviously you would come down here first and download it from the download point. You would extract it to a directory of your choice. And I'll be showing you guys all what that looks like here on my machine. So for example, here is the extracted version. Okay. So I downloaded it. I unzipped it. Here's the folder that lies inside of it. When you open up the folder, here's what you got. Now this does not, I repeat, it does not go in your community folder. This is a third party application that runs on the back end using a web server. So it does not go in your community folder. I've, I've, I'm expressing that because I've done add-ons like this before where people put it in their community folder and don't understand why things are being weird or not working the way they expected them to. The other one you're going to need is this guy here. That's FSUI PC7. Let me show you guys where to get that. Okay, so I'm gonna have a link to this page down in the description below, but this is all you need to do, FSUI PC, and then just grab this top link here where it says FSUI PC 7 version 7 3.19 for Microsoft Flight Simulator only. This is all you need. And again, you're going to extract it 
and download it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys what I did there. I created this folder. Make sure you guys create a folder that says FSUIPC or something to that effect, okay? And then select it during the installation. When you install FSUIPC, uh, select the folder you created. It will not create a folder titled FSUIPC, okay? And I do not recommend installing into the default location, okay? Keep it where the rest of your applications for Microsoft Flight Simulator are. But you open it up, here's everything that gets installed. Now let's talk about what we need to do with the two applications. So some preparatory steps here. All right, so we're gonna come here, games, apps, applications, let's find, here's the A32NX remote. The first thing you need to do is after you have FSUIPC7 installed, is you're gonna to go to the extras tab, FSUIPC7, my offset text, you're gonna copy this over here. Notice that I already have it right here. You're just gonna drop it into the installation directory where you installed everything for FSUIPC7. So again, you go into the A32NX web remote, extras, FSUIPC7, copy my offset text into your FSUIPC7 installation directory. That's step one. Well, actually, I guess we're on step three or four now, right? The next thing that you need to do, once you do that, is you will need to restart FSUIPC7. So let me bring my toolbar over here. We're gonna click here, okay? I'm going to exit FSUIPC, so I'm just gonna shut down and exit so you guys can see. So I closed it, that's the that's the way that you exit FSUIPC7, okay? Then I'm just gonna go back to my start menu. Um, and actually, you don't have to do that. We can just do, do it from right here. Here's the executable. I'm going to relaunch it. Oh, it's mad about something, stand by. Let's see, I got an error. Let's find out what I've got upset about. Oh, it just, it's already running. So it didn't shut down properly for me. If it does that, just go task manager and terminate if you have to. Now, by default, the WebSocket is not running. Okay, this is the, the key part. You have to have the WebSocket running in order for this tool that I'm about to show you guys to work. So you're gonna come here to, you're gonna launch FSUIPC7. If it is not already showing, what you would do, and actually, I don't, oh, that's why. Let me close this so that way you guys can actually see the whole process. Exit that again. Okay, there we go. So now let's go back to our FSUIPC7 folder. There we go. Now let's hit the executable. And now, again, nothing's gonna pop up, but it is running. You're gonna come down to your micro menu. Here it is here, right click and show. And then that'll bring this up, okay? Then go to your add-ons, WebSocket, start. And you should get a window that looks like get it up here, this one. And you can see that it is running, okay? Here is the address that we need to go to if you're just running this locally on your local machine. So for example, I have a touchscreen attached to my computer that I'm gonna be using. However, if you're trying to connect using a cell phone, a Kindle, a tablet, whatever it may be, you would change this where it says local host, change that to the IP address of whatever computer is running FSUIPC WebSocket, okay? Um, usually it would be your whatever computer is running Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, so now we've got that part done, okay? So now the next thing that we need to do is we can come back over here to the web remote, go into web, and now just find this index and you can create a shortcut to this on your desktop if you want, however you wanna do this, but you're just gonna double click the index. Here it is. Okay, that same address, localhost. Localhost just means that we're looking for a server that exists on the same machine that we're working on. And connect, and here it is. Now, here's where this gets pretty cool. So I'm gonna come out of full screen mode for a minute. I'm gonna move this down to my touch screen. Don't worry, you guys will be able to see everything in just a moment. Okay, let me get all this stuff put away here. We can minimize FSUIPC7. And close that, we'll minimize the web server for now. Let me get my toolbar back where I need it so that way I still have access. Go away. There we go. And then finally, let me show my touchscreen monitor. Let's also come in here and get inside the cockpit. Let me expand this dramatically so you guys can see everything that we can do here. Okay, so for the moment, I'm going to be using my mouse to sort of select what I want. Well, for example, the left ND, right? The nav display control panel. 
Okay, where did my mouse go? I lost my mouse. Mouse, there we go. Okay, so if we select it, boom, there it pops up. But now I can take it and I can move it around. The other thing you can do is close, minimize this window. I can bring this over here and it will take over that. You can also use the right ND, right? So let's say we want the FCU. That's gonna be a big one, right? Okay, we'll put that barometric pressure. If you, now, most of this stuff you would type in. So that is the catch there. Again, this isn't meant as an external cockpit necessarily, just to give you some features, right? Auto flight, here's our autopilot controls. Put that maybe up here next to the FCU. Now, the only thing I wish you could do is scale the windows, but it doesn't look like you can. I don't think you can drag and drop them and stretch them. Okay. Uh, master cautions, we'll go ahead and put that up here. And let's go to the next page here. The pedestal, uh, let's see here. Flaps, speed brakes, that would be nice. Oops, gotta click on them. So I'm gonna move this window back over here like this. Engines for your master control switches if you wanna start them. ATC, if you wanted that, I'm not gonna worry about that one necessarily. The TCAS would probably be cool, but I'm all right for right now. Uh, gear and brake, here we go. So this is auto brakes, parking brake, anti-skid, landing gear toggle. Okay, switching. Okay, you guys can see what that's all about. I don't really worry about that particularly. Same thing with the eCam. Um, if you do need it, cool. But normally when I'm working with the eCam, I'm already down there looking at that particular section, so I don't worry about that too much. But like another big one for me, definitely the overhead. All right, now I don't worry about typically for me, like here's your eight ears, right? Your fire control panel, fuel selection, okay? Normally I don't worry about that kind of stuff because when I'm actually doing the startup, I typically just switch my camera view up top. But for demo purposes, we'll set the electrical panel. We'll definitely bring that down. Okay, external lights, we'll bring those. That's a big one, especially as we're descending and things like that. The external lights can be sort of a pain in the butt to get to, right? So we have that. Let's keep looking here. Uh, internal lights if you want. Uh, the APU. We'll, we'll simulate that, right? Because I'm gonna show you guys how all this works here in a minute. Miscellaneous, let's see what's under miscellaneous. What is this? Uh, okay, your CVR test and your wipers. If you're flying in a rainy situation, we might want our wipers. So we can set that over here. Sim control, if you wanna pause it. So if you want need to quickly pause the sim, let's move that down to the bottom right here. Somewhere where it's uh, easily accessible. And a scratch pad, really just, uh, you know, numbers. I don't think you have any other options here um, as far as that goes, but you know, gives you altimeter information, things like that. If you need to write that down, wind speed. So if I mean, if you write it down in the right format, it could be useful, but uh, I wish that this had a bit more option here. Okay. So like, here you go. Uh, the scratch back can then be transferred to any field by clicking on it. Okay. never mind. So you know what? Let's test that out. I did not realize that. So for example, if we were set our barometric pressure, let's say it was 3004. Look at that, that's actually kind of slick. Uh, but again, because it's so small, I wish you could expand that. Cause like here's here's me using the touch screen feature. So let's go two, niner, niner. Actually, that's pretty responsive. Boom, there it is. Let's say we wanted our speed at one five or one eight zero, that'll work. That was, that was a fat finger. Heading, we want to travel to 301. I'm typing a little too fast. I'm not really giving it much time. That's kind of my fault. Uh, altitude, let's say we wanted to go to flight level 32000. So 320, excuse me. There we go. Uh, vertical speed, let's say we wanted to send at, I don't know, 2000 feet per minute. There we go. And we could select the down. Oh, I guess we want negative. So let's do negative 2000 feet per minute if we wanted to do that. That is slick, dude. Okay, anyway, so very, very handy. But now let's start walking through some of these other cool features. So I'm gonna get that out of the way here. So here we are, we have our nice toolbar here. Um, I'm gonna minimize this a little bit. Let me get over here back to my OBS. So I'm gonna bring this sort of down like this, okay? And let's go to the overhead panel here for a second. Get you guys a better view than that because that's pretty crappy. There we go. So I'll sort of just mess around with things. And you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and add, let's add the eight ears in, okay? 
So let's move back over here. I'm gonna drag this. Now check this out, that's the other cool part. So I'm gonna move this, look, I can keep panning. All right, so I can put this over here. Kind of a pain when you go that route, but I think, there we go. Now I got it. And what I can do is actually touch the screen and drag my finger to the right. Oh, I need to go to the left, I'm sorry, to pull the screen over. So let's start this. Uh, let's do, let me close that. Let's do battery one, battery two. There we go. Let's do external power. Okay, and I'm not doing this in any particular order, guys. I'm just demonstrating. Let's do uh, ADRs one, two, and oh, two and three over to the nav position. Uh, let's see here. Let's turn the beacon light on. Why not? Let's do that. Uh, let's turn our wing and logo lights on. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm just trying to show some things off here, guys. This is pretty slick. I'm really kind of impressed by this. Uh, let's start the APU. So start. There it is. Starting up. Uh, let's see here. External lights. We already did the external lights here. Uh, if we wanted our landing lights off, check this. Let's turn our landing lights on. Boom. There they go. If we just want them to the off position or fully retracted. I mean, this is slick, guys. Uh, let's move down to pedestal just to show some things off. All right, so let's do parking brake. There's parking brake release, parking brake set. It's very responsive. Like, I am blown away. It is responding extremely quickly. Uh, full flaps. Speed brake armed. Retracted. And I can actually grab the slider to actually pick a specific location. Let's go back to armed. And I can just tap the armed button again to disarm it. I mean, this is cool. This is really, really nice. It's very, very simple. Very, very easy to use. And you could open this in multiple browsers, right? So you could have, if you have multiple touchscreens, like I absolutely have multiple touchscreens, I could actually put a bunch of different stuff on the different locations, right? On the different screens. So this is extremely handy. I'm very, very impressed with this. And if I want to pause the SIM, SIM is actually paused. Audio, as you guys know, continues to play in the background. Uh, the glare shield is where we were at. Pedestal. I think we've got everything that I like here. But a really, really neat tool. And again, especially at a time where everything is so expensive, guys. This is a, you know, it can be used as a tool. It can be used to share with friends. It can also be used as a way to create a a more immersive experience without reaching for that keyboard and mouse. You guys know how much I hate reach, reaching for the keyboard and mouse. I talk about all the time. Um, so you can really get creative with this. Is it the fanciest thing that you've ever seen that looks all authentic like you're seeing here on the uh, actual sim? No, of course not, right? You know, you don't have the rotaries, you don't have the dials, but you've got the control and you've got quick access. And like I said, I think one of the biggest things that I'm very impressed with, at least running local host, is the response time. The response time is phenomenal. You know, if we wanted to do our engine start switches, there it is. There they are responding just perfectly. Uh, this is, I'm really thoroughly impressed with this one. Um, I love the responsiveness. I love that just about every single button and switch is here. Um, that is what really opens the doors to creativity and really making it an immersive experience. Um, and uh, I really just wanted to show you guys this. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. It's not a very long video. I hope my startup instructions were uh, clear enough to help you guys all get up and running. Again, everything you've seen here is completely free of charge. Uh, so to the developer, thank you so much for this work. I think that it has a ton of potential and will really open up the door to a lot of people who maybe don't have the money to uh, get a bunch of fancy stuff that uh, are looking to further enhance their immersion experience by being able to use their fingers rather than a mouse and key. As always, guys, link to everything will be down in the description below. Stay safe and healthy, and I will see you guys in the next one.